Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I am your messenger of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering 2 Kings 15 through 16 and John 3, 1 through 18. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and speech recognition so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and all those who have tuned in all around the world in Jesus mighty name amen and they all said amen second kings 15 in the 27th year of jeroboam king of israel azariah son of amazah king of judea began to reign he was 16 years old when he became king and he reigned in jerusalem 52 years his mother's name was jechaliah she was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. The high places, however, were not removed, and the people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. The Lord afflicted the king with leprosy until the day he died, and he lived in a separate house. Jotham, the king's son, had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. As for the other events of Ahazah's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the king of Judea? Azariah rested with his ancestors and was buried near them in the city of David, and Jotham, his son, succeeded him as king. Zechariah, king of Israel, 2 Kings 15.8 In the thirty-eighth year of Azariah, king of Judea, Zechariah, son of Jeroboam, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned six months. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as his predecessor had done. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat which he had caused Israel to commit. Shalom, son of Jebesh, conspired against Zechariah. He attacked him in front of the people, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Zechariah reign, Zechariah's reign are written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Israel. So the word of the Lord spoken to Jehu, was fulfilled your descendants will set on the throne of israel to the fourth generation shalom king of israel second kings fifteen thirteen shalom son of jebesh became king in the thirty ninth year of uzai king of judea and he reigned in samaria one month then menahem son of gad went from Tereza up to Samaria. He attacked Shalom, son of Jebesh, in Samaria, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Shalom's reign, the conspiracy he led, are written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Israel. At that time, Menahem, starting out from Tereza attacked Tempesha and everyone in the city of and its vicinity because they refused to open their gates. He sacked Tempesha and ripped open all the pregnant women. Manahem, king of Israel, Second Kings 15, John, uh, 17. In the thirty seventh in the thirty ninth year of Azariah, king of Judea, Menahem, son of Gadi, became king of Israel, and he reigned in Samaria ten years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord during his reign, and did and he did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. Then Pul king of Azariah invaded the land, and Menahem gave him a thousand talents of silver to gain his support, 
and strengthen his own hold on the kingdom. Manham ex ex exacted, exacted the money from Israel, and every wealthy person had to contribute 50 shekels of silver to be given to the king of Azar Azariah. So the king of Azariah withdrew and stayed in the land no longer. As for the other events of Manahem's reign, are all he did, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Israel? Manahem rested with his ancestors, and Pekahena, his son, succeeded him as king. Pekahena, king of Israel, 2 Kings 15.23 In the fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judea, Pekahina, son of Manahem, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned two years. Pekahina did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. One of his chief officers, Pekah, son of Remaliah, conspired against him, taking fifty men of Galilee with him. He assassinated Pekahiah and along with Aragob and Arahi in the citadel of the royal palace of Samaria. So Pekahiah killed Pekahiah and succeeded him as king. The other events of Pekahiah's Pika, reign and all he did are written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Israel. Pekahiah, uh, Pika, king of Israel. Second Kings 15, 27. In the 52nd year of Azariah, king of Judea, Pekahiah, son of Pekah, son of Remaliah, became king of Israel in Samaria, Samaria, he, and he reigned twenty years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and he did not turn away from the sins of Cherubim, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. In the time of Pekah, king of Israel, Tegalath, Pileser, king of Azariah, came and took Ijon, Abelbeth, Makara, Joha, Kadesh, and Hazar. He took a Galilee and Galilee, including all the lands of Nephetali, and deported the, the people to Azariah. Then Hosea, son of Elha, conspired against Pekah, son of Ramallah. He attacked and assassinated him, and then succeeded him as king in the twenty twentieth year of Jotham, son of Uzziah. As for other events of Pekah's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Israel? Jotham, king of Judea, 32, 2 Kings 15, 32. In the second year of Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judea, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem sixteen years. His mother's name was Jeresha, daughter of Zadok. He went with he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Uzzah had done. The high places, however, were not removed and the people continued to offer sacrifices and burnt incense there. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord. As for the other events of jo Jotham's reign and what he did, 
Are they not written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Judea? In those days the Lord began to send Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Remahalah, against Judea. Jotham rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David and the city of his father, and Ahazah, his son, succeeded him as king. Ahazah, king of Judea. Second Kings 16. In the 70th, 17th, in the seventeenth year of Pekah, son of Remahalah, Ahaz, son of Jotham, king of Judea, began to reign. Ahaz was twenty year, twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem sixteen years. Unlike David his father, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel and the events and even sacrificed his son in the fire, engaging in the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense at the high places, on the hilltops, and under every spreading tree. Then Rezan, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Remolah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem and besieged Ahaz, Ahaz. But they could not overpower him. At that time, Rezai, king of Aram, recovered Aleth for Aram by dividing out the people of Judea. Adamites, they moved into Aleth and have lived there to this day. Ahaz sent messengers to say to Tegalath, Pelazer, king of Azariah, I am your servant and vessel. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Aram and of the king of Israel, whom are attacking me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace and sent it as a gift to the king of Azariah. The king of Azariah complied, complied with, by attacking Damascus and capturing it. He deported its inhabitants to Kir and put Rezan to death. Then King Ahaza went to Damascus to meet Tegalath, Pleaser, king of Sketch, at the altar with detailed plans for its construction. So Uri, the priest, built an altar in accordance with all the plans that King Ah Ahaz had sent from Damascus, and finished it before King Ahaz returned. When the king came back from Damascus, he saw the altar. He approached it in, and presented offerings on it. He offered up his burnt offerings and grain offerings, poured out his drink offerings, and splashed the blood of his fellowship offerings against the altar. As for the bronze altar that stood before the Lord, he brought it from the front of the temple, from between the new altar and the temple of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the new altar. King Ahaz then gave these orders to Uriah the priest. On the large new altar, Offer the morning burnt offerings and the evening grain offerings, the king's burnt offerings and his grain offerings, and the burnt offering of all the people of the land and their grain offering and their drink offering. Splash again against this altar the blood of all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. 
but I will use the bronze altar for seeking guidance. And Uriah the priest did just as King Ahazah had ordered. King Ahazah cut off the side panels and removed the basins from the, mar the movable stands. He removed the sea from, from the bronze bowl, bowls that supported it and set it on the stone base. He took away the Sabbath canopy that had been built at the temple and removed the royal entryway outside the temple of the Lord in deference to the kings of Azariah. As for the other events and of the reign of Ahaz, Ahaz, and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Judea? Ahaz rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David. And Ahazah had his son, and Hazekiah, his son, succeeded him as king. Okay, Second Kings 15 through 16 is complete. Now we will move to John 3, 1 through 18 in the New Testament. Jesus teaches Nicodemus. John 3. Now there was a Phar Pharisees, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked, Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not know, do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one Son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God, God's one and only Son. And there you have it, John 3, 1 through 18. 
which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2020 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering 2 Kings 17 through 18 and John 3, 19 through 36. Father, I just thank you for your word and the blessings that you have given me to be your messenger of the word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, I just thank you for all the folks that have come out here to see us today. And I thank you for uh, them becoming uh, viewers and multiple viewers all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe, your messenger of the word of God. Saying, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow because, well, I'll be here and I hope that you are to